Hi Key Stage 2, coming to you in black and white today for VE Day. We're going to be doing an assembly today all about VE Day, so I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you soon. So today is VE Day, the 8th of May 2020, and you can see the date on the screen says the 8th of May 1945, and that was when VE Day actually happened. We're commemorating VE Day today, 75 years from that date. Commemorating means remembering, celebrating and reflecting. Have you ever wondered what VE stands for? Lots of people say VE Day, don't they? You can pause the video now and if you've got someone with you, you can talk to them about what you think VE Day stands for. VE stands for Victory in Europe Day. It was the day that marked the end of World War II in Europe. Unfortunately, it was only in Europe though that the fighting ended and many soldiers didn't get to go home at that point. They had to carry on fighting and lots of them went to a place called Japan. Winston Churchill was the Prime Minister at the time and he made VE Day a national holiday and he said hostilities will end officially at one minute after midnight tonight but in the interests of saving lives the ceasefire began yesterday to be sounded all along the front and our dear Channel Islands are also to be freed today. I wonder how people felt when they, when they heard Winston Churchill say those words. Now, today is the 8th of May 2020. It's 75 years since that day. I wonder why we continue to celebrate VE Day. You could talk with somebody at home about that now. It's important to remember all of those people who sacrifice their lives here and abroad during World War II. There were 46 different countries that helped during the war and they were called our allies. Now normally there would be lots of special events taking place across Britain today but because we're having to work hard at staying home and staying safe you'll probably be celebrating in a different way. You might be doing some World War II baking. You might have put some bunting out. I'm certainly celebrating by having done my hair in the style of the 1940s. I wonder what you're going to be doing at home today to celebrate. In 1945, the celebrations took place on the streets. We can see here crowds gathered to celebrate the end of the war. It had been a long six years for the people of Britain and it was the first time that a war had actually affected people in Britain. The fighting didn't just take place abroad. Many places in Britain were bombed and affected. So when that ended, people came together. Now we're not coming together in the streets today, but we are working together as a community at the moment to keep each other safe. And that's just like at the end of World War II when everybody came together, not just physically, but also emotionally to celebrate the end of such an awful time. The largest crowds were in London. One crowd reached up to 50,000 people and they celebrated all night long. Huge crowds gathered outside Buckingham Palace where the King and Queen and their daughters one of whom is now our Queen, Queen Elizabeth, were on the balcony and they waved to the huge crowds in celebration. This picture shows a celebration up in the north of England. Winston Churchill said, let us turn our thoughts to this day of triumph and sorrow. Now triumph means a great victory and that you've won but he was also saying that although this is a great victory 
and we have been victorious and the war has ended in Europe, actually there is also feelings of great sadness. And that's because so many people gave their lives and so many people had been affected in Britain with the blunt bombing during the Blitz. He said, we may allow ourselves a brief period of rejoicing, but let us not forget for a moment the toils and efforts that lie ahead. King George the Sixth, who was the king at the time, also gave a speech that was broadcast from Buckingham Palace because both of them, Winston Churchill and King George, recognised the importance of remembering those who had lost their lives. King George said, let us remember those who will not come back. Let us remember the men in all the services and the women in all the services who have laid down their lives. We've come to the end of our tribulation and they are not with us at the moment of our rejoicing. Here we can see Winston Churchill and King George the Sixth together. Now these are some photographs from Britain during World War II. I wonder why they're all black and white. Certainly in real life they would have been in colour. Can you think about why we didn't have any colour photographs of World War II? There was so much devastation for the people who lived in Britain. Their houses were destroyed, their belongings were lost and there was lots of rebuilding to do still lots of work even though the war was over and we can see here almost a whole street has been devastated by the bombing during World War II. Here again in this street we can see some buildings were still standing but many were destroyed. This picture was taken on VE Day we can see two small children celebrating with their flags I wonder how they might have been feeling when the war was over. You can see that they're standing on rubble which has been left over from the bombing. Is there anything else that you can notice about the picture? Shortly after the announcement that the war was over, many soldiers returned home. Some still had to carry on fighting in Japan, but those that returned home would have had memories of the war and the conflict that they had been witness to. This was hard for many of them, and returning home for some didn't mean returning home to their houses as they had remembered them, because many of them would have been bombed during the war. It would have been a difficult time for them and their families. Here we can see families reunited after the war. But many people hadn't returned home yet. There were many ref refugees who were scattered all across Europe. They'd had to leave their homes during the war because it wasn't safe. And here we see some Polish refugees at a refugee camp in Germany. And they were waiting to be returned to Poland. Many people had been held in concentration camps and they also were released and allowed to go home or start new lives. They weren't allowed to go with their families, they had to just go, just the children, so their mums and dads were left at home. Now this was a big shock for many of the children because leaving their families was something they hadn't had to do before. And they were moving to places they didn't know and to live with people that they didn't know. I wonder how that must have felt. Have you figured out what's in their cardboard boxes yet? You're right, they're their gas masks. Children and adults had to carry them with them in case there was an attack. Here we can see them all crowded into a train as they're saying goodbye to their parents. Thousands and thousands of them were sent on their way and the labels had their name and where they were going on them. And life in the country would have been very different for children who were from the city. 
London doesn't have big sprawling fields and farm animals and potatoes growing. So these children would have had a very different life whilst they were evacuated. What did you think? Oh, I'm back in colour. That's better. There are loads of reasons for us to be commemorating VE Day today, aren't there? Lots of things for us to think about. And I bet you've seen lots of flags and bunting around as people are celebrating this special day together. We really miss you here at school and we hope to see you soon. Keep looking on the YouTube channel for your teachers and teaching assistants who have been up to all sorts of things at home. Please do keep safe. Lots of love. Bye.